What was it like growing up in Spokane? It was a little bit of a shock, culture a shock. shock. Culture shock. I attended Mead Junior High, so I'm a Mead brat. You know, in the area, we heard back over in Hayden, there was a KKK compound. So that was like a big thing back then. I mean, but I never noticed it as a kid. What's your favorite? And what is your least favorite? Oh, this is easy now that I think about it. It was like, oh my God, what is your favorite? Hands down our backyard. Well, thank you for coming to my podcast. Absolutely. All right. So one of the things that I usually get on my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. being that Spokane is largely a Caucasian community, mm -hmm. so people ask me, you know, being that I'm Asian, I'm a minority, mm -hmm. they, they ask me how it's like uh, to be living here. One of the reasons I invited you is, okay, well, I, the audience wants to get your perspective as well. I like, I like that question. I haven't yeah. had someone ask me that one in quite some time. Let's start from the beginning. Were you born in Spokane? I was not. Okay. Yeah. So how long have you been here and how did you come to Spokane? I've been here roughly, let's say, <clears throat> 94, 95, right, right before the ice storm, if, if everyone's been here oh, for a long time. Okay. So my family moved in, I believe that year, or maybe the year before that. We, my family was uh, in the carpentry industry, so building houses, building large scale carpet, apartment complexes, and then moved their way up to like uh, large shipping yards. So we had my grandmother purchase some land and a house back in the 70s here in Spokane, actually over in Mead, mm -hmm. and um, when it came time for us, since we, my family was a journeyman, they're journeyman carpentry, we moved all over. At one point, we moved seven times in two years. So when it came to me hitting to be a teenager, my mom kind of said, hey, I want to settle down. My grandparents said, there's some property up here in Mead. Why don't you go ahead and take care of it? And, and that's when we came up to Spokane. From, from there, um, I, we, I, I attended Mead Junior High. So I'm a Mead brat, I, I absolutely say it, I love it. Okay. Grew up in the Mead area, but Mead Junior High went to the early stages of Mount Spokane. Back then it was Mount or Mead Mount Spokane High. Okay. Um, and uh, attended the high school there. And then uh, I did a little bit more of a uh, vocationary school for computers actually. Hmm. And um, at the time, I, I was so young, I had my first child at, ooh, um, Oh boy, I was like 20, 19, somewhere mm -hmm. right around there. So, you know, that, that hit and, and instead of pursuing that field, I kind of went into the restaurant industry, did very well for many years, became a corporate trainer for one of our local restaurants. Okay. Opened up a few restaurants around the U.S. Uh, that was quite fun, actually. Uh, Iowa, went to Oklahoma, Oregon. Okay. Uh, went around a few different places, opened up a few of them here in Spokane as well. So uh -huh. that was really nice. Then moved over to a local company, Aspen Sound. A lot of folks, if you live in the yeah, area, yeah. they yeah. know them. Mm -hmm. uh, worked there for quite some years. Became mm -hmm. a store manager at their North Division location. Um, and about five years ago, so this is kind of like going back all the way to high school, and then I, I was there at Red Robin, I don't know, for, or actually I worked at Red Robin, I didn't say that. Red Robin, one of the local guys here, I was there for about 15 years, um, and then moved over to Aspen Sound. And then last five years right before I came to Vista Title, I was actually working at Verizon Wireless, one of their corporate locations through the pandemic um, on the corner of uh, Division and Francis, right there at their corporate, corporate office. And then now I've been here for just, just celebrated my year. I think I'm a year and two, maybe, maybe a year and four weeks in, somewhere right around there. Okay. So that's kind of the fast track story of, of how and my family came to Spokane and, and, and what we've done. So you practically grew up in Spokane. I call it home now. Yeah, absolutely. So it, well, it, it has been your home. Yeah, I got family here now. I got yeah. my three kids. So, mm -hmm. what was it like growing up in Spokane? It was a little bit of a shock, culture a shock. shock, culture shock. Yeah. What, how old are you when you first came? Thirteen, maybe. Okay. A little bit thirteen. If we moved from predominantly, I would say the Hispanic community traveling, you know, carpentry, moving where my, migrant workers, moving sure. where the work was. Yes. Um, a larger cities. I lived outside of, um, in that time frame, like I said, seven times in two years, I lived right outside of Tacoma and Seattle area, mm -hmm. a town called Frederick Way. Mm -hmm. Most folks know it. Mm -hmm. um, so coming here, it was. I was the minority then at that time. A lot of, you know, at that time, we got to understand, this was like, like 98, 97, 95, I saw 95, 96. So, you know, in the area, we heard 
back over in Hayden, there was a KKK compound. So that was like a big thing back then. I mean, I remember graduating and they had their own parade in Coeur d'Alene. Mm -hmm. So, but I never noticed it as a kid. Like, to be honest, I mean, yeah, I noticed that we were here, like my family was one of literally two in Mount Spokane of, of a brother-sister combination that were Hispanic. Yes. Um, Asians weren't, there was, you know, we, we became good friends with a couple of the Asian brother and sisters and um, just because we were the minority, there was very few of us at the time. Yes. Good friends that I have now here in Spokane are the Azars, so uh, from the restaurant. Oh, the set. restaurant, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I know their family, I uh, still know them to this day, but you know they were the Middle Eastern family that had two three here mm -hmm. so it was um, it was a different time back then but it's not the same anymore it's well, way better way better today. oh man way better in, I mean in what sense for, for me it's like I can say like moving here we didn't have a store at tienda as we would say yes so coming here there was no tienda there was no way we could get our, our, our cultural food from we couldn't get a carne asada or anything else so mm -hmm. Um, now you have two, three different stores. You have a Hispanic radio station. You see the Asian stores, the Asian market, the, the European market. You have all these culturally different stores now where I feel like when I was a teenager, it just, it just wasn't so. We were too far north. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. Like way too far north. But right. now it's, it's, it's different. You, you find a lot of different cultures. At least I find that I do. I don't, yeah. I don't feel like I'm singled out anymore. You know what I mean? My, mm -hmm. my, my kids grow up. They, they don't notice that. Not what I did. I mean, when's the last time that the literally the KKK had a a, a, a parade down you know uh, uh, Sherman Street in Coeur d'Alene? They, they just that stuff is just it's here, but it's not. I walk a street, and I feel safe. Yeah, it, it's family. It's I never worry about it. So, oh. so we we practically moved in at the same time that you did. Mm. Cause we moved into the area in in '94. Okay, okay. Uh, but we were in Post Falls at that time. Yeah, so you know. Uh, I know, yeah. It's, it's, it's different back then as far as the uh, diversity of what you saw, you know, the uh, minority establishment restaurants and mm -hmm. groceries. It still falls below our expectation, to be honest with you. Correct. But it is true that it is, it's better now. And I agree with that. You just go a little south and you'll find or even west a little bit and you'll find more of the markets that you say yeah we, we're a little slow behind but I, like i said i know i can say that living here for a long time mm -hmm. and seeing that change mm -hmm. that it's nice to to see wish it was more i agree with you yeah. wish it was more but yeah. um but I, you know i only see it from the hispanic side of things that's true at, at the same time so um not having those things to so growing up we had so you know every culture has their foods or, or, or dishes that they like. So I like a concha. So it's a, a, what the? It's, a it's a concha. A concha? A concha. Okay. Yeah, it's like a Mexican donut is what I call it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a It's a sweet bread of, of some sort or uh, you've heard of like an empanada, right? Yes. Okay, so same, they're, they're all part of, um, when you go to the store, you would find them in the pastry or the donut section. Yes. They don't have a donut section, they have the, the concha sections or the, 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 the empanadas. Okay. So uh, moving here, every time family would come up from like let's say the Boise area uh -huh. I mean we would put in a special request doo, 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 oh, call them up be like yo I need you to go to Rodriguez I yes. want you to buy I mean we would 40 bucks we would throw it down they would yeah. bring back three four dozen of, of, of the donuts you know what I mean yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. now we can just walk into like a Leon's and, and and pick that up okay so that that's like for me that's a, a big thing I can share with my kids those cultural things I mean now we have like we just did, I think, what was it, Oktoberfest or something like that, where they had the Latino Day downtown, right off of uh, Lincoln, right there. So, uh -huh. like I said, for me, it's been, it's been, it's been a lot. It's been, it's been nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. We still, you know, our, our two kids now, they're all, bo they're both grown up and they're in in the Seattle area. Mm -hmm. So whenever they're coming here for, you know, for a visit or something, that's a, we do the same thing. You know, we give them a call. Hey, <laughs> you drop by the the grocery and and get this and that. So yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely uh, much better than it was back then. Particularly, the roads were were really much narrower. I, I remember I ninety was like 
I think it was two lanes mm -hmm. each way or something mm -hmm. like that. And then they now it's it's a lot bigger. Or even going up towards Deer yeah. Park, it was one lane each way. Yeah, like yeah. Up, up from right there at the Y, really. Mm -hmm. when it was just one lane each way. No, they did have two right there because the shopping center. I mean, Fred Meyer wasn't even put up down there by Wandermere Golf Course yet. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's changed a lot. Yeah. It's grown quite a bit. Okay. Okay, so so you consider Spokane your home? Yeah. Have you ever thought about leaving, moving elsewhere? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Have. Yeah. So what what makes you stay in Spokane if you've had those thoughts? My children. They, My children. Yeah, yeah. They um, kind of like what my mom said very early on when I was a teenager when uh -huh. we were moving around. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a family and you start having one and you find a place that you call home, you wait. You don't move them around. You don't go traveling other places. I mean. You can, but, mm -hmm. you know, because there's families out there like we have our military base that's right around the corner from us. They're also making those decisions. But if you can ground yourself for some of those those four to six years while they're going from junior high to high school and then maybe pushed on to college, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I'm at in my life right now. Okay. Uh, my children, my two eldest are in college or already in there. So they one did running start, the other one got her AA. So both of them did AA this year. Mm -hmm. And then I have my son that's a uh, freshman in, in uh, Shadow Park. Mm -hmm. So staying here, I see myself minimally here for the next four years. Okay. You know. So are they are they all here in town? They're all here, here in town right now. Okay. They're looking to move. My two eldest children are my daughters. They're mm -hmm. looking to move down to the Boise area. Okay. So we have family down there. That's uh -huh. lots of family down there, I should say. And uh, you, you mind me asking if... Ask away, my good man. If, I have no problem. If you're thinking about moving elsewhere, where would that be? So the wife and I, my wife Chantel, uh, who grew up here in Spokane as well, um, she and I would like to go to um, Florida at some point. Florida, okay. Yeah. So, so what, what about Florida that uh, you might be missing? I like all four seasons here yes. in Spokane, uh -huh. hands down. I mean, look outside, it's changing colors, it's beautiful. Go up to Manitou Park, it's another beautiful area. Go out to Airway Heights, I mean, ORV Park is another area. You want to see some colors, Woo, go yeah. out there, right? Yeah. For me, for my wife, I should say more my wife, happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. She does not like the cold. She does, I yeah. love the snow, I do not like the cold. And sometimes some folks may mix the two the difference, you know okay. what I mean? Like uh, okay. Spokane is not generally, in my opinion, a cold area. Yeah, we get our snow. But the last couple of years, it's been pretty cold. So, um, you're opposite my wife. <laughs> she likes the cold, but not the snow. Really, <laughs> yeah. really. Oh man, I love the snow. You can always be a kid when the snow is out <laughs> and about. I mean, make a snowball, make a snow fort. You know what I mean? So throw one at each other, have fun with your family and your kids. And uh, I think, you know, go make a snowman at Christmas. And, and, and who remembers? I mean, this is why it, it just doesn't happen for me as much anymore. But I remember the day when I was a kid, you'd walk outside and play in the field. And there was, you know, right on Thanksgiving, well, the turkey bowl. It was a little bit of snow outside. That made it more exciting. Mm -hmm. Now it's just cold and rainy. You know what I mean? So um, if I had to, like, now choose, I'd rather be a little warm. If it was for her, she would straight go to Arizona. <laughs> I told her I'm going to get a divorce. I'm not even playing. You go to Arizona, I'm, we're done for. <laughs> So uh, Florida, we had a trip with my last company that we went down to Florida, and we just kind of really, really enjoyed it as far as just walking out and yeah. the weather. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure about some hurricanes yet, because you mm -hmm. know when you live in the Pacific Northwest, I, I, I say this very lightly. The only thing we have is fires. Last fires have been kind of beating us up over the last couple of years in our in yeah. our communities around us. So, That's you know, we don't have the huge earthquakes. We don't have the the monsoons. We don't have the tornadoes and the hurricanes and all that. You know, so yeah. we would lovingly say sometimes, "Oh, they have us fires around here." But you know, I say that respectfully. I got yes. family that that's in the firefighting community, and, and it's been a, it's been a, last couple of years have been really tough. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I certainly agree. We we get our I'd say our minimal share of natural disasters. Right. You know. We're lucky in this area. Yeah. We're yeah. really lucky. We are. So I, like I said, I like the area. Uh-huh. I would stay here forever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've been here forever. So, you know, I, I think, you know, when, when the wife and I say we want to do something different, that's probably the direction that we'll move in. Okay. But, you know, minimally, like, we ain't happened that for at least the next four years. So uh, I don't see it happening anytime soon in that sense. Okay. So. Two questions about Spokane. What's your favorite and what is your least favorite? What is my favorite? 
Oh, this is easy now that I think about it. It was like, oh my God, what is the favorite? Hands down our backyard. Your backyard? Not my backyard, like where I oh. live. Our backyard as uh, far as Washington. Spokane, oh right. my goodness. Yeah. Throw a rock, hit a lake. Yeah. You can skip a you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're just gonna hit across any three, four different lakes, go have some fun, go up to Lake Roosevelt, go up to Two Rivers, go see the border, go, you know, go down south. I mean, you wanna see some race boats? I mean, you're, you're just a couple drive away down for the Tri-City. So I absolutely love our backyard. We have waterfalls, we have uh, mountains, trails, we have the ORV park. You wanna go four-wheeling? You wanna be a redneck? Get out there, break <laughs> a drive line. Yeah. So yeah, um, I love our outdoors. Uh, when my family was a little bit younger, we have great camping trips. I mean, pick a state park, pick a pick a corner, pick anywhere. So mm -hmm. yeah, our yeah. backyard. I call it our backyard. That's what yeah. I love about Spokane. Yeah. What I dislike, I only dislike it because it's taken forever and I can't wait for it to get done. The North South Freeway. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, since I was in high school, they were tearing up the North side, redirecting like underpasses for railroad tracks. And we're like, oh, in the year 2000, we're going to have the North South Freeway. And 24 years later. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> they're still working on it. So. Yeah. But when you when you go through, uh, you know, over down by the, the college, you can see the bridge is going in. When you move your way north a little bit, you can see it's our, it, it's there. It's coming. It's, yeah. And when it opens up, I think it's going to be something really nice for Spokane. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right now that has been because it's it just it's we don't have traffic. When you live in Seattle when you live in the Tacoma area, you understand what traffic is. And that was 20 years ago almost. Yeah. And we're still not as bad as that. That's true. So, as I would say, wah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get caught between the Sprague and Division X. Poo-hoo, an extra 15 minutes. <laughs> Be thankful it's not three hours. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the only thing. I, if I were to say to complain, yeah, I, I, I love Spokane, everything about it. I've grown here. My family's here, so. Yeah, I've, I've gotten so used to the traffic. It, it, to, in my case, probably that might be my number one complaint about Spokane. Mm -hmm. I think there isn't any overall traffic management, road management, I, however you want to call it. So, for example, if you go on division, the stoplights aren't synchronized so that you don't go stop and go, stop and go from mm -hmm. one light to the other. Before we moved over here, you know, in the early 90s, that was already the case in California. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just straight stoplight. Uh, everything's all synchronized so you don't really have to stop if you go to a main uh, surface road mm -hmm. that's not the case here um, I don't know what it would take for them to do that and I'm starting to uh, complain about the traffic <laughs> until about a month ago uh, I had to I was in I had to go to Seattle for a business trip and and I had to commute from my son's house to, to downtown <laughs> it's just uh, insane traffic. Yeah, you are not imagining things. <laughs> traffic really is getting worse. It's worse than it's ever been in a lot of cities around the country. So listen to this statistic from Texas A&M's Traffic Mobility Report. The average commuter in this country wastes 54 hours stuck <gasps> in traffic. That's extra traffic. That adds up to more than $1,000 in personal costs, things like gasoline. From I-5 in the west to I-95 in the east and everywhere in between, a lot of people are going nowhere fast. In case you're wondering, the Seattle area has the seventh worst traffic in the country with drivers losing 78 hours a year on average. Okay, I'm glad that I'm still living in Spokane. Spokane, so nice, yeah. so nice. All right, my final question. What would you say has been your biggest challenge that you've overcome, either professionally or personally, to be where you are right now? Obviously, you, you, you've had a long career, successful, you've got a good, nice family, and now you're in your professional family here. How did you get here? What was the biggest hump that you had to, you know, overcome? Yourself. It's always, it's always yourself, in yeah. my opinion. Something I'm trying to teach my son right now, my daughters, my son, m you know, mainly, mainly my son. I think it's tough saying this. I wouldn't even say tough saying it. It's, it's, it's not something I think is spoken very often. It's teaching. Yeah, yeah, 
teaching my son how to be a man. And I say that because an individual stepped into my life that taught me how to be a man and taking care of your family and putting them, putting them first. I didn't understand that. And I would say that my last job working at Verizon introduced me to that idea and then stepping here lets me know that I can do that. My biggest hurdle is making sure my family comes first, making sure I put them first. You know, you're young in life and you usually put money and other things and other priorities first, but is, is continuing, continuing to put them first, that they, that they put the, I put them in a better position than I was. I love that question. I'm going to be very honest with you. I didn't grow up on the right side of the tracks. And what I mean that my, my family was poor. We grew, we lived in a car like the heater was close the windows, turn on the car and hope you don't run out of gas. I mean, gas was like, you know, buck 15 back then or something like that. But yeah, you know, and, and, and when, when I got my job here, you know, my wife and my daughter even said, dad, you got a grown up job. So just the biggest hurdle is just getting through what life throws at you because it's easy to quit. It's too easy to quit. Yeah. And I, I look forward to that challenge every day. So being in this industry, working for, this is going to be sound very cliche, but working for Vista Title has put me in a position that I am now being coached in a positive manner every day by attending certain offices that, that um, kind of tell it to you straight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you wake up. You don't, you, you don't want to, you don't want to work. Get up. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I come here and I, I, I have a, I'm struggling on something in, you know, in past when you kind of bring it to your boss, you're always wondering, am, am I saying something dumb? No, I never feel that here. Mm -hmm. Every time I go to my superior and ask him, hey, I heard this certain term, can you help educate me? They're there. So full circle, that, that being said, it's, it's, it's hard, you yourself, right? It's hard to sometimes recognize that and say, hey, I need a little help. Hopefully I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm doing a good job at it. That's, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not easy, but. Well, that's my biggest hurdle, I think. Yeah. Well, this is certainly a, a big, pleasant surprise knowing you more personally this yeah. time. Well, thank you very much.